Welcome back. So we're talking about parameter estimation and fitting distributions to data. And now I'm going to introduce the method of moments. This is maybe one of the simplest um, kind of methods to understand. It's really intuitive. Um, and I think this is going to make a lot of sense to you. I'm going to work this out for the Poisson distribution and for the normal distribution, but I want to just state how the method of moments works first. Okay, so given some data, um, and we're going to say that these are measurements of a system, these are random variables from uh, their IID, their identical, independent, uh, independent, identically distributed data. This is my data. Um, and let's say that they come from the same distribution. So that distribution is some probability density um, of my variables given some parameters theta. We want to estimate the parameters. So we're going to call this um, estimate um, theta hat. We want to estimate the parameters as some function of the data, as some function um, of of the data. This is just the general estimation problem. Actually, at this point, this has nothing to do with the method of moments. This is just how we state the problem of estimating parameters of a probability distribution. The way that the method of moments works is that we're going to take these parameters and we're going to write them in terms of the moments of that probability density function. So we assume that this PDF is known. Uh, in the method of, of moments, we kind of assume the structure is known. We assume the structure um, of this relationship is known. You don't, strictly speaking, have to, but like you generally assume you're dealing with Poisson or you're dealing with normal, and you don't know what the lambda or the mu and the sigma are, and that's what you're trying to find. So um, what you do is essentially you write, um, you write, theta in terms of your moments, in terms of the moments of the PDF, um, not of your data. These are actual moments of the moments. Um, and we define our generalized moments as mu k equals the expected value uh, of x to the power k. So mu1 is just the first moment, the average, mu2 is the second moment, mu3 is the third moment, and so on and so forth. So we write theta in terms of this, and then what we do is we substitute in, we calculate the sample moments and substitute those in. Okay, then uh, we replace the mu k with sample moments. And these sample moments can be computed from the actual data, like the sample mean, the sample variance, things like that, the sample moments. Uh, we replace mu k with the sample moments to get uh, essentially theta hat as a function of these mu k hat. These um, are kind of the sample moments. These are the sample moments. And this is my uh, estimated parameters. Okay, good. Um, this is really, really simple. And I think if I show you a couple of examples, you're totally going to understand how this works. Um, so let's just do that right now. Okay, so I'm going to start, um, I think, with a Poisson uh, distribution. So we're going to assume that f is Poisson, and we're going to try to learn lambda. Then we're going to do the same thing for normally distributed data. So uh, the first example, let's see if I can get all the way down here. The first example is Poisson. So we're going to say x i is Poisson, and I never know if I should capitalize P or not, Poisson lambda, um, and lambda is the unknown parameter. So this is kind of equal to some f of x given theta, and obviously theta is lambda, my unknown, um, my unknown parameter. Okay, good. So the way we do this is we essentially write down lambda in terms of these moments. And we know from several lectures ago that uh, lambda, this value, is equal to the expectation value of x, um, this uh, first moment mu1, okay, the mean of the, of the distribution. And so what we're going to do is we're going to replace uh, mu1 with the sample moment. So we're going to replace um, with 
uh, lambda hat equals mu one hat, the sample moment, which is one over n sum from i equals one to n of x of each of these xi's, um, which of course is equal to um, you know x bar the the sample mean of my data. So that's the best estimate here. So Poisson of this lambda hat is a fit from data. Okay, really, 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 really simple. Okay, we took our distribution, we don't know lambda, but we can write lambda in terms of the moments of the PDF. Okay, so lambda is equal to the mean uh, value of the PDF, the expectation value of x. I don't know what that is, but I do have data. So I can compute the sample moment, the first moment with my sample data, which we call x bar, it's the sample mean, and I can use that in this expression for lambda. So I plug in mu hat and I get a lambda hat, an estimate of my parameter that's best fit from data, okay? We're gonna show later that as n goes to infinity in the large n limit, this is what's called consistent, meaning that this estimate based on these moments will converge to the true values of the parameters. That's a really useful property. In the large n limit, moment-based estimates converge to the true parameters. That's really useful. Now, how fast they converge, that's a pretty important question we'll ask later. Let's do another example. Um, example two, normal distribution. Uh, example two, let's say that x uh, i is a normal variable, normal uh, with mean mu and standard deviation, sorry, variance sigma squared. Um, and again, this is equal to f of x given theta, where theta is a vector um, of mu comma sigma squared, okay? So these are the unknown parameters. I don't know mu, I don't know sigma squared, but I have some data that looks normal. So I'm gonna try to fit mu and sigma squared from that data. Again, we've already looked at this when we looked at survey sampling and the sample mean and you know the central limit theorem. We, we've already looked at this quite a lot. And we're trying to estimate these using this method of moments. So what we're going to do, uh, maybe I'll do this in green, is we're gonna write these two quantities in terms of my moments, okay? So we know that mu, this parameter, is equal to the expected value of x, which is equal to mu one, okay? And we know that sigma squared is the expected value of uh, my variable x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. This is kind of the definition of the variance. It's expectation of x squared minus expectation of x quantity squared. This is my second moment, mu2, minus my first moment, mu1 squared. Okay, so I've written the parameters I care about in terms of my, uh, my moments of my distribution, mu1 and mu2. And now I replace those with my sample moments, okay? So we're going to replace, uh, we're going to replace with sample moments. So replace with uh, mu1 hat and mu2 hat from data. These are sample moments. And I drew those terribly, but that's mu1 hat and mu2 hat. So mu hat equals mu1 hat. And again, mu1 hat is just the sample first moment, um, which is the, the average of all of these divided, you know, one over n times the sum of all of these, uh, which we call x bar, the sample mean. Okay, again, we've seen this before. If I wanna fit a normal distribution and I don't know mu, take all of my data, average that data, that's a pretty good estimate for mu, the, the mean of the, the, the distribution. Same thing for sigma hat squared. Sigma hat squared, what I'm gonna do, that's uh, mu two hat minus mu one hat squared. Mu one hat squared is just x bar squared and mu two hat is one over n sum from i equals one to n of each of my random variables squared. So this is mu two squared minus x bar quantity squared. This is my met method of moments estimate for sigma hat 
squared. So again, just taking a step back, what are we trying to do? We're trying to fit, we're trying to find the parameters of my distribution that best describe the data. And the way we're doing it with the method of moments is we write those parameters in terms of the moments. This assumes we know what the distribution is. Like we can compute the moments in terms of these, uh, these, these values, or we can invert that and compute these values, these, these parameters in terms of the fundamental moments, mu1 and mu2. And then what we do is re we replace those moments with the sample moments. From our actual data, we compute mu1 hat and mu2 hat from data, and we plug those in for our expressions for our unknown parameters. And that's how we identify these unknown parameters using the method of moments. Again, just summary. Um, this, we will show in a later lecture that these are what are called consistent. So in the large n limit, um, these estimates will converge to the true parameter values. Um, but we do have questions about how fast they converge and what is their error for finite n. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, thank you.